Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex and this month we're going to be taking a look at playback issues as you can see on the title card there. I've been hearing from a lot of you lately that you're having some trouble getting your 4K movies to play back smoothly. A lot of you have been having trouble with over the air content as well. And what we're going to do today is step through a lot of the things that I can see tripping people up when it comes to playing back high resolution and or high bit rate content. And I'll give you some pointers that you can start thinking about. And then, of course, we've got hours of content on these topics that you can dive into for further detail. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see how I can make your playback a lot smoother on your Plex server. Now, in order to troubleshoot playback issues with Plex, you've got a lot of different variables to think about. The first is the bit rate of the media that you're trying to play back. You then have to think about the bandwidth you have available on your home network and how you're allocating that bandwidth to different devices. If you're trying to send your media outside your home, you need to think about how much upstream bandwidth you have from your internet service provider. And then you also have to look at the hardware capabilities of both your client devices and your Plex server, because not all client devices can play back all types of media. And if they can't play back a specific type of media, the server is going to have to transcode it. And if your server is not capable of transcoding that media efficiently, guess what? You got playback issues. So let's start off with the foundation of these variables, which of course is the bit rate of the media that you're playing back. Now on my Plex server, I have a bunch of my 1080p Blu-ray movies stored as MKV files. And the 1080p versions of those Blu-ray movies run at about 48 megabits per second max. That is quite a lot of bandwidth, especially if I've got a lot of people in the house watching different movies at the same time. Each one of those users could be using up to 48 megabits per second to watch that film. And if my network can't accommodate that much bandwidth, we're not gonna have good playback experiences. If you're looking at 4K movies, you could be going up to 100 megabits per second max with one of those films. Now, both technologies tend to be variable, so you're not going to max out all the time. But if you've got a lot of people playing back media at the same time, this is going to definitely result in playback issues if your network can't accommodate that amount of traffic simultaneously. Now, one of the things that I recommend people do within their home network is to use Ethernet as much as possible. And the reason is is that it's faster than Wi-Fi, it's more reliable than Wi-Fi, and it offers greater capacity. And one of the things that we've seen on this channel over the years is that when you really stress a Wi-Fi network and have a lot of data being transferred over that Wi-Fi access point simultaneously, each individual's experience tends to go down a bit. You get more latency, you get more drop packets, you perhaps use up all the available bandwidth and have playback issues. When you're on ethernet, Each user gets about a gigabit of symmetrical performance within the home network, and it doesn't waver all that much, and you're going to have a much better streaming experience, especially with those high bitrate movies. Now, most routers out there will support gigabit Ethernet on their Ethernet ports, but not all client devices do. So, for example, the new Google Chromecast here has an Ethernet adapter available for it, but that Ethernet adapter only runs at 100 megabits per second, not a full gigabit. And as a result, you'll very quickly saturate this little device here if you try to play one of those high bandwidth movies off of your Plex server. So do your homework as to what your client devices have. You might need to upgrade to something with a gigabit Ethernet jack on board. Now, if you don't have Ethernet cabling all over your house, you might be tempted to go out and buy one of these inexpensive Powerline Ethernet adapters. I would advise against that because I haven't found them to be all that reliable or all that fast. I had a very hard time getting live TV to stream over these when I was testing them out a few years ago, and I've never seen one that even gets remotely close to its advertised speed on the box. But one thing I have found works really well are Mocha adapters, and we recently reviewed these Go Coax ones that don't cost all that much. And what these let you do is transport your computer data over your cable TV wiring. It will work with existing satellite and cable TV service, so if you still have that service, you can keep using it. 
and the data will run on a different frequency on the wire. And if you don't have cable running in your house right now but still have the wires, uh, you can use those wires again. And we found that you can get uh, 2.5 gigabit speeds over the coax cable in your home. And these things are a great way to extend your network. And in full disclosure, the Mocha Alliance, which is the standards body behind Mocha technology, is a past sponsor here on the channel, but I actually was using their product long before they became a sponsor. It's really that good. So if you want a great extender, that's the way to go. So again, try to get your Plex server and the clients over to a hardwired connection as best you can. That's going to dramatically improve playback performance. And the side benefit here is that you're also going to improve Wi-Fi for everybody else in the house because you're moving all of that high bandwidth activity off the wireless connection to the wired side of your network. And that, of course, will result in better performance for the Wi-Fi users that might be doing other things with your Wi-Fi. It's a win-win for everyone. Now, if you are having trouble playing back video outside of your network, you do have to think about your upstream bandwidth. And when you go out to your favorite ISP and shop around for bandwidth, the numbers they give you are typically only the download speeds. They rarely advertise the upload speed. So I would suggest going over to speedtest.net, running a test and see how fast that upstream connection is so that you can start planning how to divvy up your bandwidth for you and the other people connecting to your Plex server outside of the house. And just because you have maybe 12 megabits of upstream speed doesn't mean you're always going to get that speed. There's a lot of factors that can impact how fast your upstream connection is. And a lot of that involves activity on your network going out to the internet. So if you've got kids in school doing video chats with their class or their friends, that's going to eat up some of that bandwidth. If uh, somebody's transferring large files back and forth for work, those uploads will saturate that bandwidth as well. One thing that's hit me quite a bit are these phone backups. And what happens with my iPhone is that every time I plug it in, it backs up all of the photos and videos that it took to iCloud. And so if I was just outside shooting some video, it's going to send a gig or two up to the iCloud server once I put it into my wireless charger here. And that's something that will immediately uh, hit you on the upstream bandwidth, especially if you don't have all that much to begin with. And then, of course, you have issues related to your ISP and their capacity. Most consumer broadband is shared. So if there's a lot of activity going on in your neighborhood, a lot of people working from home all uploading stuff, that might impact things as well. And you have a little less control over how to alleviate that issue. But there are things inside your home that you might be able to monitor for. And some routers do allow you to prioritize traffic. And if your router does allow that, prioritizing your Plex server might give you a little bit better performance and more consistency when you're transmitting out to the internet. Now, if you're convinced your bandwidth is under control, then you need to start looking at your Plex server because you might be running into some hiccups related to transcoding. And what Plex will always do is try to get stuff to play back even if the source file isn't compatible with the client device. And it does that through a process called transcoding. It's going to take an original format and convert it on the fly to a compatible format that the client can play. So for example, if I've got an old iPad from 10 or 15 years ago, and I've got some 4K movie I want to play back that's encoded in HEVC, Plex will look at that file, look at the iPad, and say, let's convert that HEVC to H.264. And if your server is able to process that conversion in hardware, then that process will be super quick. You'll hit the play button on the iPad. Maybe it'll take 10 or 15 seconds, but you'll get that movie playing back and it will convert things on the fly, oftentimes without you even knowing that it's doing all of that work in the background. But if your hardware is not capable of accelerating that process, it might get very jumpy. You might see a lot of buffering. Uh, you might see the server just seize up because it can't process the video fast enough. And then of course, you'll be noticing those playback issues. Now, the important thing to note on hardware transcoding is that you need an Intel processor with quick sync technology. Uh, we've covered this in depth in the past. And you also need a Plex Pass subscription. Now, you can also use a PC with an NVIDIA GPU, but now you're looking at pretty expensive hardware here. And I think for a lot of folks, they just want to set up a NAS or a little mini PC to kind of run their Plex server. And under those circumstances, you're going to need to do some research to make sure that the device you're about to purchase can support hardware transcoding. 
Uh, lucky for you, Intel has a database of all of their processors, and the link that you see on screen here will give you a full list of every processor that supports Intel QuickSync, so you can figure out exactly uh, what the capabilities of the device that you're researching are. Now, there is one non-Intel device that supports hardware transcoding, and that is the NVIDIA Shield TV Pro. This, of course, is a media playback device, but it's so powerful it can also run a Plex server. And I know many of you out there got started with your Plex experience on the NVIDIA Shield because it's an all-in-one solution. You can serve media to yourself through the box and get a good sense as to how Plex can work for uh, your media collection. What's cool about the Shield TV Pro is that it doesn't require a Plex pass to get the hardware transcoding. So you can get a good feel as to how transcoding works. You can see it in action, and then when you're ready, you can move over to an independent server that might be able to serve more users simultaneously. Now, what I use in my house is the WD MyCloud PR2100. This has been my Plex server for many years now. Uh, like the NVIDIA Shield TV, the WD MyCloud PR2100 and its four-drive sibling, the 4100, also do hardware transcoding without a Plex Pass. Both are powered by a now older Intel chip, the Intel Pentium N3710. And when you look up this chip on the Intel hardware pages here, you can see that it says it is a Braswell processor. And it supports QuickSync, but it's not going to support every format that QuickSync can support because it's an older chip. So one thing to take a look at is this really useful chart over at Wikipedia. And it keeps getting longer and longer as they keep developing new video technologies. And if you look down here on the Braswell Cherry Trail column, you'll see that uh, the chip we're using supports a lot of different video formats, but it doesn't support HEVC 10-bit files, which means that if we have something encoded in that format, it's not going to hardware transcode. And I've got a great demo to show you related to this, so let's take a look at that. All right, so I'm on my iPhone right now, and I've got two different files that I'm going to play back for you. The first one here is called H.264 Demo. Now, this is a file format that my Plex server can hardware transcode. And when I go to play back this file, you will see that it will start up pretty quickly here on my phone. It's almost instantaneous. Uh, in getting started. Let me just turn the volume down here real quick. And everything's playing back. We're all happy. And if you take a look at my control panel right now, you can see that our CPU load here is not significant. The file is playing back, no issues here. And if we jump up to the top of the screen here, you can see there is some hardware transcoding going on due to my settings. We're converting this uh, 1080p H.264 file into another H.264 stream at a lower bit rate. So it's running at 10 megabits per second, but I think the source file is probably uh, 15 or 20. So it is doing some stuff in hardware here. And as you can see, everything started up quickly without too many problems. No big deal, right? So let's go out here and uh, close out the video. And I'm going to switch over to a similar file that is a 10-bit HEVC file at 4K. Now watch what happens uh, when I go to play that file back. We'll just go here and resume it from where I last left off. And it's going to take a long time to get started here. And the reason is that it is trying to do the same transcoding on the file to basically turn it into a 1080p H.264 10 megabit stream. But it has no support in hardware for decoding uh, what's going on. And you can see my CPU here is spiking. It's taking it a really long time for things to start up. And if we jump over to the dashboard here, you can see that we're not getting any kind of hardware uh, decoding of that file. So while it's converting it uh, into H.264 with the hardware encoder, it's not able to decode the video in hardware. And as a result, our CPU is through the roof. We're not getting any playback here. And it might start playing back eventually, but this is certainly not the same thing that we just experienced on a file that was supported by the built-in hardware transcoder of this device. Now, if I were to do this on a PC that has a newer Intel processor, this would have worked pretty much the same speed as what you saw with the H.264 file. 
And that's why even with an Intel QuickSync processor, you may not have the same experience on an older chip that you might have on a newer one. But all is not lost here because I'm on my local network and this device is capable of playing this video file back directly without any transcoding whatsoever. So on the fly here, what I could do is click on this period icon on the lower right hand corner, go to playback settings, and then have the quality be set from auto to play original quality and that will immediately get the video playing back for us at its full frame rate. And it's able to do this because this client device can play back uh, this content natively. And again, I'm on my local network, so not a big deal here to do that. And if we jump over to my uh, status here, you can see that it is now direct playing that media. So if you have a Plex server that cannot do hardware transcoding, but you have a lot of recent modern devices, then you can just have everything direct play. And as you can see, your CPU utilization is very minimal because all it's doing is just streaming the file over to the device and all of the bookmarks and all the other things that you get from Plex will of course uh, still work in the same fashion. Now, if you want to prevent transcoding whenever possible, what you need to do is adjust the quality settings on your client device. This will look a little bit different on a phone versus a TV, but the language should be the same. And if we go here to quality on my phone, you can see that I've got three options for quality. And of course I can adjust what happens when I'm remote or limit the amount of cellular data that I want to use. But in this instance, because I am looking to stream this media at home over my home network, I can select home streaming here and set it to maximum. And when I do that, it will most of the time default over to the original file format and not do any transcoding at all. You might want to jump into the advanced menu here and make sure allow direct play is set to on. I believe that is the default, but if you are having trouble, you might want to check that just to make sure it is enabled there. And now that we have those settings in place, if I jump back to that 10 bit file that was given us trouble before, it will now play back directly. And I'll just hit the resume button there and you can see that started up super quick. And if we jump back over to my computer screen, you can see that we are in fact direct playing that on my phone without any transcoding at all. So check those settings because this might likely solve your playback problem. Just make sure that your source device is able to play back that media natively. And also make sure of course that you've got enough bandwidth to support the bit rate of that native file because it's going to send you whatever that source format is. Now also people were running into trouble playing back live over the air television. Let's have a look at some pitfalls with that. Now Plex supports bringing in live over the air television uh, provided you have a compatible tuner that is either directly attached to your Plex server or you use a network tuner. I use that at my house. I have an HD home run and in full disclosure they are an occasional sponsor here on the channel. But once you get that on your network, Plex discovers it and you can use uh, Plex to watch live TV or if you have a Plex Pass, use it as a DVR as well. And a lot of people run into issues with playback on their devices. And I think the reason why a lot of people have issues is because of the very antiquated broadcast format we're dealing with these days. So most of the US is still on MPEG-2 for the codec that's used for TV broadcasts. And as a result, if you're trying to do stuff over Wi-Fi and you don't have a very good Wi-Fi signal, you're gonna run into trouble. As you can see here, we're pulling in a 1080i signal from the over-the-air broadcaster, and we're running at about 39 megabits per second. MPEG-2 is very inefficient by today's standards, and broadcasters are slowly moving over to more efficient formats, but this is very demanding on the network. And in many cases, you're going to run into issues of just not having enough of a reliable connection. And for many years, I struggled getting live TV to work on my Wi-Fi. AC wireless, I found, works better. That's what I'm on right now. 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi doesn't seem to cut it, and I had a lot of problems with power line as well. I also noticed that sometimes Plex tries to transcode the video even though I have my phone set to original settings. So sometimes you have to force it to play back the original format too. So I would really look to your network as the issue here with over the air content. And you might also want to make sure that the devices you're streaming to support native MPEG-2 playback. Most televisions do, 
but many other devices do not because there are some licensing fees involved for the manufacturer. So if that device doesn't support MPEG-2 playback natively, it might force a transcode even if you have those direct play settings in place. And oftentimes that's what I see beyond the network issues impacting users when they're trying to do live over the air television. So I hope this video was helpful in troubleshooting any kind of playback issues you might be having. Again, there's a lot of different variables to look at and we've done a lot of in-depth content on many of those variables which you'll find down below in the master playlist. We've certainly done a lot on server choices. We've looked at using the NVIDIA Shield Pro as a server, for example. We've looked at using uh, very low cost NAS devices that can't do transcoding as well. So have a look down there. I think you'll get a lot of questions answered there. And if something hasn't been covered, let me know down in the comment stream because your ideas help fuel future ideas for Plex videos that we do every month here on the channel. I want to thank Plex for their ongoing support. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.